The Ketchak dance, sometimes called monkey dance, is a spectacle that is well known to tourists in Bali. A group of men, perhaps 150, become human instruments as they simulate the sounds of the forest and the gamelan to accompany a dramatization of the Ramayana story. The dance originated in 1927. Here is all the magic and mystery of Bali. Within high temple walls, with light from the moon and soft oil torches shining on brown bodies, voices speak words without meaning, which derive from old incantations against evil. This is the Ketchak, mime on a grand scale, as arms and fingers of 150 men create forests and 150 voices create a whole world of sound. Jakoda Maas, who's an expert in Balinese music, lives in Ubud, where he runs his Manara lodging house. For four years, he was a lecturer in Balinese music at the University of California, Los Angeles, where he remembers Richard Meal as one of his students. Peter Sculthorpe and James Murdoch are other Australian musicians he knows well. He's now in his 70s and he's a wonderful, sprightly, enthusiastic figure and he's just returned to Bali after two and a half years lecturing on gamelan music in Holland. The title Chakorda places him high in the Hindu caste system, a prince perhaps, and a member of the warrior caste. Chakorda Maas is the founder of Mudraswara Foundation, which is pledged to preserving the music of Bali. Already after five years, there is a Mudraswara Gamelan, and music and dancing teachers attached to the foundation are constantly seeking out old songs and dances which are in danger of being lost forever. It was Chikorda Maas who introduced me to my teacher, Anuk Agungade Raka. When I met Raka, he wore a long woven sarong, and amazingly enough, in that climate, a heavy roll neck sweater. He was a good-looking and dignified man with a fine-boned face and erect carriage and the air of a philosopher. In the small building where they were housed, dim light picked out the bronze instruments scattered about the floor, the line of small pot-like gongs of the riong, the great gong itself, the keys of the various metelephones. My instrument was to be the metelephone called Gangsa. Two of these were placed facing each other. Pakraka sat me on a low box at one, the female, and he settled himself cross-legged on a mat behind the male. Pakraka took up a small wooden mallet, something like the picks of mountaineers, and I took up another. He played a succession of notes on the bronze keys, and I repeated them. So we progressed, and I learned from memory. I had to. Music is taught orally by a patient and thorough repetitive process. The traditional music of the gamelan is recorded in the mind, not on the manuscript. When I did well, Park Raka smiled with his brown eyes and it was worthwhile. After we'd been playing for a little while, people appeared. There were faces at the windows, old faces and young ones. Little boys wandered into the room and squatted or stood, watching and listening behind Park Raka. A young man with a fighting cock in the crook of his arm came close and squatted by me. When he was asked, he put the bird down and took up a pick and helped to demonstrate a passage of syncopated rhythm. For the whole of our time in Ubud, this young man would always stop his work, his motorbike, or his conversation to come and ask about my progress, politely and seriously. I have a tape from this period, in which Pak Raka, playing the gangsa, demonstrates what I'm trying to learn. 
The boy with the fighting cock, Arlit, picks up a mallet and begins to play on the sweet-toned Gendare, and she caught a mouse, who'd come to see what progress was being made, begins to play the kandang, the Balinese drum. After three visits to Ubud, arriving is almost like arriving home, and leaving is always sad. My teacher, Nakagung Raka, has become a good friend, and then there's Made Demong from the famous Peliatan group. He's also a friend and teacher. In fact, Made taught me one of the great differences between musicians of the West and musicians of Bali. With Made, I was studying Bali's dance drama, Raja Pala. David and I decided to use the legend of Raja Pala in a music drama for children, and I hope to refer to musical themes from the original Balinese source. I was learning by repetition as the Balinese do, but it did seem a long and arduous method, so I asked Made to play alone while I notated the melody on manuscript paper. Next day I went back quite sure that I'd had it beaten, but when Made played the melody again it had changed. I said, it's not the same as yesterday. And Made looked at me in astonishment. He was not astonished that the tune was not the same, but at the fact that I expected it to be. In the villages of Bali, everyday life is decorated with flower offerings to Hindu gods, with carvings, ornate temple gates, and the thatched roofs of family shrines behind compound walls. Almost every village has its group of actors and dancers and an orchestra, the gamelan. As Indonesia's top painter, Afandi, said, in Bali, everyone's a little artist. The old hands say, you should have been here ten years ago when the Legong dance was the Legong. Then it was a real experience. Now it is shortened for tourists and it's just an entertainment. Now there are thousands of motorbikes, transistor radios, rock and roll and everything else that goes on in the world and travels by jet. Wolf-eyed agents lead sheep-eyed tourists and business is good in the large hotels. The traditions of Bali in art and customs have been handed down for centuries orally with the barest notation. They come from ancient beliefs, animism and ancestor worship and from the Buddhist and Hindu religions. Now academies and societies face the enormous task of recording what exists. In Bali, to be a dancer is to be a musician, and to be a musician is to understand the dance, for a Balinese will tell you that the dance is music made visible. We were invited to see students at work at the Academy of Dance and the Conservatorium of Music in Denpasar, Standing side by side, the buildings are great oblong pavilions with steep Balinese roofs and guardian stone giants at the doorways. 
Groups of students in sarongs and white shirts on golden skins regarded us softly as we walked between them. We watched the gamelan and dancers in rehearsal, and I was amazed by the discipline. The leader who played the drum, Kandang, was a particularly attractive and gifted musician. He held the orchestra in the palm of his hand, and at the same time seemed to carry on a pretty flirtation with one of the small dancers. Her blushes and glances decorated the performance. Here then is a tape of the student orchestra at the Conservatorium of Music Den Passar. They're performing the Legong. It's an ancient classical Balinese dance full of beauty and grace, the ultimate in femininity. From five years upwards, girls aspire to be a Legong dancer, but at 14 they retire as a Legong performer. Thank you.